Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Thing YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 1209, remove all adjacent duplicates in a string 2. Let's read the question prompt. You are given a string s and an integer k. A k duplicate removal consists of choosing k adjacent and equal letters from s and removing them, causing the left and the right side of the deleted substring to concatenate together. We repeatedly make k duplicate removals on s until we no longer can. Return the final string after all such duplicate removals have been made. It is guaranteed that the answer is unique. Before we go into an example, I just want to say this problem is a follow-up to remove all adjacent duplicates in a string 1, which I have a video for. So if you are unsure on how to do this one, go watch that one first, and this solution should make a lot more sense. So that being said, let's look at an example. We're given a string, which is D E E E D B B C C C B D A A. And we're told that K equals three and we want to return A A. So how did they do that? Well, if you remember from how we solved the first iteration of this problem, we basically want to use a stack to keep track of the characters that we've seen so far. And in the first problem, it was always given to us that, you know, K would be two. So if any two characters were adjacent together in the string, then we would be removing them. But this time it's K. So that means that we need to keep track of how many that we've seen so far at every iteration. So what we want to do here is we want to go from left to right and we're going to maintain a stack except this time instead of just using the character and checking whether you know our current character equals the top of the stack we have to also check what the count of the current character is uh, to make sure we need to pop or not so let's go through an example which will make this a lot more clear so let's define our stack here and remember we're still going to be going from left to right on our string so Obviously, in the beginning, the stack is empty, so we can't really do anything except add our current character. So we're simply going to say D. We're going to add that to the stack, but we're not just going to add D. We're actually going to add the count of the number of Ds we've seen, and we can increment and decrement, or well, I guess we would never decrement, but we can increment this if we see more Ds. That way, we don't have to pop more than once. When we get to a point where we need to do a K removal, we can just pop this object here. So we get to D. Now we're at E. So we double check, OK, does it equal to, you know, the previous character we've seen? It doesn't. So we can add it to our stack. So we're simply going to say E1. And we add E1. And now we get here. So we're at the second E. And we can see that E equals to whatever's at the previous thing in the stack. So now what we want to do is actually we just want to increment the count of the number of E's in a row that we have. So instead of one, it's going to be two. So then we get to the third E and we can again see that E equals E and then we can increment our you know, E count and it becomes three. But the thing is, now that we have three in a row, since K equals three, we're not allowed to have that. So it turns out that we need to remove this E from our stack because those are three E's in a row. So we get rid of it. Now we get to D. And remember, we're going to check the stack. OK, well, now the only thing left on the stack is D1. So that means that, you know, we can simply just increment D's count. So now we have D2 in our stack. Hopefully that's easy to see. So D2. Then we get to the B. Obviously, B doesn't equal D, so we can add it on its own. So we're going to say B1, and we're going to add that to the stack. And then we keep going. So then we see another B, which equals to whatever's at the top of the stack. So that means that we simply increase this count to 2. Then we're at the C. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, OK, we have C, and we've seen one of them. Now we continue. So we see C, we see another one. So we can simply increment this count. So now it becomes 2. Then we see another C. Now we have three C's in a row. And remember, this is the point where we get rid of it, because K equals 3. So we're not allowed to have three of the same in the same order. So now our stack's going to be B2 and then D1. Now we get to this B. And it equals to whatever's at the top of the stack. And now, you know, our count here becomes three, which we're again, we're not allowed to have because K equals three. So that means we have to get rid of this. So our stack now is just D2. Then we get to another D. And since D equals whatever's at the top of the stack, we can just increment our count. So this now becomes D3, which we're not allowed to have because again, K equals three. So we get rid of this. 
Then we get to this A here, and we can put A into the stack because the stack is empty, so we have to just put it in there. So we're going to say A1. And now we get to the second A, and since A equals whatever's at the top of the stack, we simply want to just increment the count here. So we're going to say A2, and we've actually reached the end of the string. So now we can just simply return whatever's in our string builder. But remember that you know it's not in a form that we can actually just concatenate things together. We need to kind of process this. So we need to just strip out you know each individual item from our string builder. So you know we'll have a two as kind of like the thing. So we need to add to our result you know a multiplied by two. So we need two a's in a row, and that will be our final solution. So that's how you're going to do this problem. It's very similar to the the previous iteration of this question, where we're still going to go from left to right. We're still going to use a stack here to maintain, um, you know, the state of our problem, but we're going to also keep track of the count of the number of, you know, a certain character in a row that we've seen. So that way, if we see another one, we can simply increment the count. And if the count ever equals to K, which is the number that we're not allowed to have in a row, we can simply pop from the stack. Whereas before K was always two because we were just working with adjacent duplicates, um, duplicate pairs. Whereas this time K can be anything, you know, it can be two, 10, 50, 1 million, doesn't matter. Um, so that's the algorithm that we want to do. And then at the end, you know, we'll have characters here and we simply just need to parse them out of this kind of list representation, concatenate, you know, A, however many times we've seen it, and then just keep doing that for every single thing, right? We could have like another D1 here, like, uh, you know, Z2 or whatever. Um, and then, you know, we would just con strip out all of those. So, you know, it'd be like A, A, D, Z, Z, and then, yeah, just that would be our final solution if the stack looked like this. So let's go to the code editor and write this. It's going to be very similar to the previous problem. So it shouldn't really be too surprising. Uh, the only major change is just this list representation within the stack to keep track of our counts. So I'll see you in the editor. Let's write the code. Okay. We're now in the code editor. Let's write the code. Remember that we're still going to need a stack to keep track of our progress through the string. So let's define that. So we're going to say a stack is going to be an empty list. And what we're going to do is we need to iterate over our string like we did in the previous problem, character by character. So let's set up the for loop for character in string. We're going to say, OK, if the stack is empty, then there's no way that we could possibly pop something or you know increment a count of a character because there's nothing to do there. So we simply just add our character and the and its count, which is one, to the stack. So we're gonna say if not stack. So if the stack is empty, we're gonna say stack dot append, and we're gonna use um, you know we're gonna put the character and then its current count. And make sure to use a list here because obviously tuples are immutable. So you would not be able to um, use a tuple here because you can't change it once you've already appended it to the stack. So make sure you use a list here. Otherwise, if we do have a stack, remember that there's two cases here. Either the character that we're working with, char, does not equal to the top of the stack, in which case we just append to the top of the stack the current character and its count, one, or we do have a match on the characters. And now we need to check if adding another you know, character to the current count that we have for whatever the top of the stack is, if that would push it, its count to be equal to K, then we need to pop. If not, then we can simply append and then continue our for loop. So uh, in the case that it doesn't equal, so we're going to say if character does not equal to the top of the stack um, zero, right? Because the zeroth index is going to represent the character. We're going to say, then we can simply just append whatever the current character is and a count of one. Otherwise, in the case that they do match, now we need to make sure that if we incremented k, or sorry, if we incremented the count of whatever the top of the stack is by one, that doesn't equal k. So we're going to say if stack, so whatever the top of the stack is, and we're going to get its count, uh, if adding one to it equals to k, then that means that we have to pop from the stack. So we're going to say stack dot pop. Otherwise, we can simply increment the count for that character because we know that they match. So we're simply just going to increment the count by one. And we are good. And that's really all we have to do for this problem uh, in terms of like processing the string. Now, remember, you know, we're going to have a stack, but the form is going to be, you know, character and then some count after that. So we need to actually get it in the format that we can just actually return the solution. 
because obviously this isn't the right format. We need just a regular string. So we need to parse out the elements here and you know put that into something that we can just join together and return. So let's now say stack. We're going to reassign it to be you know the character times the amount of uh, the count that it shows up uh, for character count in stack. So essentially, we're just going over the stack and we are, you know, appending or replacing each element with the character times the count. So for example, if we had, again, something like a2, you know, d, d2, uh, e1, what we would do is this string or this line here would replace this with like a, a, um, d, d, E, and then now we're in a format where we can simply concatenate this entire string and then we would get our final solution a a d d e so that's the reason why we want to put it in that format uh, so now all we would have to do is simply return um, empty string dot join so this is going to concatenate all those elements in the stack and that should be our solution let's submit this make sure that we didn't make any bugs hopefully we didn't cool we seem to have solved the problem. So what is the time and space complexity? Well, for the time complexity, the worst case is going to be the same as in the previous problem, where there was actually nothing we could delete. And, you know, we're still going to have to go through the entirety of the string to basically go over each character. After we do that, we have to, you know, go over, um, you know, the stack here to basically put them in a format that can actually be joined and then we have to join. So realistically, we're looking at three big O of N operations in a row. So this is, you know, going to be um, big O of three N, but asymptotically, this is still just going to be big O of N because we can kind of ignore that, um, you know, constant here. So this is going to be a big O of N time complexity and space complexity. In the worst case, there's nothing for us to delete. So our stack is going to be holding basically the the original string. Think of it as like the alphabet string. So it'd be like A, B, C, you know, D, E, F, dot, 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 um, X, Y, Z. So that would be what our, would be stored in our stack, except for, you know, it'd be like A1 uh, and then like B1. Um, so we'd have to basically just store the entirety of our string here uh, in the stack. And then again, we would have to... Um, yeah, actually, that, that's the, the, the space complexity. This part is, um, you know, we're, we're not re refining a new variable here. Um, so yeah, space complexity is going to be big O of n because of that worst case. So hopefully that makes sense. That's how you're going to be solving this problem. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if there's any videos that you'd like me to make, please leave it in the comment section below. I'd be happy to make those videos for you guys. Just let me know what you want to see and I'll make the video. Otherwise, happy coding.